We're in Albany, New York to get a look at the fascinating process behind the work of artist Ken Ragsdale. Let's go. I make two-dimensional images that start out as drawings and then they become sculptures and then they become photographs and then they become paintings. I really wanted to make painted landscapes. That's, I always painted landscapes and that's what I wanted. And then it became apparent uh, that there were a lot of people making painting lands, painted landscapes. So I thought, well, there's something, there's gotta be something that I know how to do that nobody else knows how to do. How can I use that? When I was a kid, I would do schematic drawings for my dad, who was a hydraulics engineer. And he had a shop and people would call him and he would be on the phone with this long stick with a piece of chalk on it and in the shop he would be making these sort of hieroglyphics on the floor while he talked on the phone and he was figuring out how much power and how much you know length of hose and what the pump needed to be in order to run these projects and when he was done it was my job to look at the chicken scratches and make a schematic drawing that people could understand. So over the, the years, this idea of thinking an idea through a schematic started to become even more three-dimensional. I started to think of everything as living in a box. And how could I take that box and open it up onto a flat sheet? When I was in grad school, I started taking these drawings, these sketches, and building little models and then setting them up and painting them. And they said, well, you know, that's still not very interesting. And they said, why don't you photograph them? Ultimately, what I realized is that I could make a painting with light. It was still a two-dimensional image, it was still a landscape, it still was color, but it was just light on paper. The first one that comes to mind is one that I did in grad school, and it was the first time that I, I sort of saw the potential. And it's called Night, and it's a scene of the house that my dad built that we lived in. It had a lot of blues, dark blues and things. And I wanted a light in the house, but I didn't, I was so, I didn't understand it well enough at the time. So I thought, oh, what I'll do is that I'll just cut a hole underneath the table and I'll put a, a flashlight. And it was beautiful, it was fantastic. It was like it was exactly the right color. <laughs> so just to get this little glow in the window. So that one sort of set really the scene for everything that I did after. The images that I make are all from memory. I take things that I'm familiar with from my past and I sort of reconfigure them into a new landscape. The memory is really about a moment of anticipation. I want when people look at the image to think that something may have just happened or that it was about to happen. But it was in that, that moment where you weren't sure which direction things were going in. And I never have people, there's, there's never any figures in any of them because I think figures are too specific. I think uh, there's something about the specificity of a viewer trying to understand what a figure in a landscape is doing, that it takes away from that possibility of things maybe happening in this direction or that direction. All of the objects, the players, I guess I would call them the cars, the houses, the trees, whatever. A long time ago, I made a really stupid rule for myself that each one of those objects had to be made out of one piece of paper. And I couldn't use tape or glue, that it had to be held together just with tabs and slots. Part of that came from the idea that everything was, because it was all about my memory, and your memory is always in flux and it's always sort of transferable and, and never fixed. So I wanted everything that I made to be able to come apart and lay flat again. 
and then I could store it away, I could bring it back, I could reattach it, I could change it, I could do whatever, so it was never fixed. A car is a perfect opportunity. Knowing that everything fits in a box, you think, okay, if I have to open up that box, what's the best center point for that to functionally operate? And in the case of a car, it would be the roof, that's easy. So I can start, I will just start when I draw, I'll just start in the middle. And I'll start making straight, lots of straight lines. And the weird thing is, is that I don't really have a plan when I start, I kind of have a plan, but it's in the process of drawing all of these straight lines that it starts to, I can start to feel my way into it. I can start to see dimension. And if this is this wide, then it needs to be this wide. And then I'll start to allow that thing so the sides will come out the front, the windshield will attach to a hood, to the grill, and then things might come in underneath of it, and it's like, how do I attach the bottom? I have a whole system for wheels which are then attached, you know, by a structure to the bottom of the car. But almost anything can be built that way. So I have thousands of these objects, and so then I can pick and choose. If I need to make a new one, I make a new one. And then I have a digital camera set up, and the camera is on a live feed to a video monitor. And that way, if I'm out in the scene trying to arrange things, I can look up at the monitor and go, oh, yeah, it needs to go that way a little bit. The idea of um, working from memory that, that really appeals to me is that it's sort of, in a weird way, the only objective truth. Your memory is sort of so in flux and so um, incapable of holding on to details that clearly the details don't matter anymore. It's only what you remember that matters. The artist uh, William Kentridge, he, one of my favorite quotes is he says that making art is a way of arriving at knowledge that is not subject to cross-examination. And so what you're trying to do is to try to build an image, a very layered complex image that in and of itself is believable, but in its own way. So that people, when they come to it, they go, oh, I get that, I understand that. But it's not connected to any other believable reality that they know. So they can't argue it.